Born sometime between the 6th and 4th century BCE, near the Indus River in the north of modern-day Pakistan, was a man who would be considered the founding father of Sanskrit linguistics, Panini. However, very little is known about the personal life of the grammarian beyond this fact. Panini's great work is called Ashtad Hyayi. It is not the oldest Sanskrit grammatical text. In fact, it refers to older texts and authors within its own work. However, it is the oldest complete and surviving work on the subject. Panini takes the linguistic lists of these earlier grammarians and then subjects them to analysis. He then breaks Sanskrit down into its nominal and verbal components. In doing this, Panini creates a precursor science of language, comprised of a set of operational rules and then a set of meta-rules that are used to interpret these former operational rules. Panini focuses not on the subject or object of the sentence. Instead, he looks to the verbs as the action core of the sentence. He then examines how the object and subject, although he uses the terms agent and patient, relate to the verb. He also then looks at the auxiliary aspects of the sentence, which he calls karakas, which are the thematic roles provided by case endings in Sanskrit or prepositions in English with regards to location, ablative and dative uses of terms. The genius of Panini is that he creates a fully descriptive grammar of Sanskrit in only 3,995 rules or axioms. He recognizes that a completely enumerative list would be infinite, so instead he uses abbreviation and flexible rules which are general enough to be applied to an infinite number of variations. He also orders the rules from general, like rain which falls everywhere, to specific, exceptions which shelter the few. With this finite and relatively small list of rules, you are able to reconstruct and create the entirety of the Sanskrit language. And amongst these rules for interpretation of Vedic texts, we are given a universal grammar. Although Panini then uses these tools for Vedic understanding, his approach is not like that of the Mimamsa, who focus purely on the study of Vedic language. Instead, Panini deals with the vernacular and Vedic languages as a singular whole. Panini's grammar was descriptive of how Sanskrit was spoken, but was also normative, in that it's not just how we talk, but also how we ought to talk. However, he realised that words do not emerge ex grammarian, but rather from their daily use. To quote Panini, If you want a pot, go to a potter. However, if you want words, don't go to a grammarian. Panini thus cast around everyday society looking for a measuring stick by which other forms of grammatical usage could be used against. In this case, he chose the form of spoken grammatical Sanskrit that was used by the elite and exalted that as the best way that Sanskrit was to be spoken. His argument was that it was not just due to these individuals' caste or class, but rather due to their upstanding character. Panini was immensely influential on classical Sanskrit, so much so that every Sanskrit work post-Panini is considered classical Sanskrit only if it conforms to the rules of his composition. In some ways, it could be said that Panini actually invented classical Sanskrit, as opposed to Vedic Sanskrit, which came before it. He also spawned generations of later grammarians who wrote texts on his great work to further explain and contextualize Sanskrit grammar. What is surprising, though, is the influence of Panini's work through to the modern day. Panini's work has influenced many important modern linguists, including Noam Chomsky, and he has often been lauded as the true founder of the science of linguistics.